Hi guys, this is a, uh, hopefully going to be a little bit quicker. This is about a video which is called Think Before You Speak Atheist. It's on a channel called EF Dawa. And I've done a couple of reviews from this EF Dawa channel. Um, whatever. This one, I'm going to start a little bit different because this is the quote of the month. Deep subjects sometimes have very academic arguments. Mm -hmm. This is what this guy Abbas says. Because, and I'll get to this in the end, he is pushed so fast. So he can't, he can't answer. He can't say. He just stutters and comes up with deep subjects have academic arguments. Okay. The, the video starts off with this, this weird intro with lots of noise and, and effects and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so Abbas starts off after two minutes saying that the Quran says, if you speak the truth, bring you evidence. You know, this is straight from the Quran. So he's claiming that we should all base our uh, whatever arguments on evidence. It's just a pity that he doesn't. That is why the Quran says, if you speak the truth, provide your evidence. You provide your evidence, I provide my evidence, and upon the evidence, we go wherever the evidence takes us. Because he, he comes up and he, he makes, <clears throat> makes I'm just going to take a couple of things, like he makes Allah look like a childish idiot, like who didn't know anything. All he can do is always hold on a second, hold on a second, because he talks such a, a lot of nonsense and he carries on and on and on. But it's so difficult to listen to him for a longer time because he just rattles and I don't, it's, it's horrible listening to him. So is really, is, is God stupid, illogical, and irrational the way that he paints him? I don't know. Or he doesn't understand how this god creates failure and then punishes what he has created the the logic doesn't doesn't quite resonate with him and the the non-muslim he debates or he's talking to is actually quite clever he he picks up all the little things and 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 plays them back to abbas but um abbas doesn't understand them and just continues on on his script and of course he says humans are to blame for for everything that uh, goes wrong my, my point to you is this you'll, you'll tell me god failed no i'm not saying yes, that to you, you no what i'm saying to you is this you are applying your reasoning yes reason hold on a second your subjective reasoning yes. as to what you feel was the best way yes. to send down this message and of course, then he goes to the fitra, you know, where the human apparently is equipped with this belief that a God exists automatically as a baby, which is not true. I don't know how many times we need to debunk this. It will still come up. I don't know why Muslims are so dishonest. Then he says there needs to be a warner because this God was not capable of bringing out a message and telling everybody what he wants. So he has to bring some people to tell um, other people about this God. God can't do it himself. And um, this is why consciousness doesn't really um, come about through evolution, but has to come through a God or something. And then he throws around some other things like survival of the fit. I, this is a mess. Okay. He, he doesn't understand that if, if I do something wrong, if I defraud the government, that this fraud damages others. He doesn't understand benefits for society or well-being. He's never thought of these things. It's always like, like very superficial skimming on the top, but never thinking about anything properly. He doesn't think why would there be a need for a warner? You know, and wh why is it always his special pleading that is required to save his God from the criticism of others? And why is it that it's always scholars who know better than their God what this God actually wants? <laughs> it's quite strange. Okay, then, then we have this more evidences. And then, of course, he arrives at the linguistic miracle, like so many other Muslim apologists, and how Muhammad reconstructed the mess Allah made into an even bigger mess. Because nothing was somehow revealed the way that it was supposed to be in the later Quran. So it had to be resorted. And then Muhammad slotted each sentence where it belonged, where today you have this huge mess if you read the Quran. I mean, anybody who has even opened it and just skimmed over a couple of pages knows this is a big mess. So then, then he goes into this, this pattern seeking and he brings up a guy, a, a the Muslim bloke in, uh, where was it, in Kuwait. And this, this guy, Raymond Farron, has brought up this, this circular thing where he says there is a circular pattern in the second chapter, in, in, in the chapter Baqarah. The Surah Baqarah, orally transmitted, without any editorial process, and he finds 
that the first section of the of the chapter and the last section of the chapter are linked linked very closely because he says well i mean first of all are they linked no not at all he says they are linked but they're not he, because the first one he says the first one is somehow linked to the last one the second one to the second last the third to the third last and so on and then the one at the middle sort of brings everything in together but now come on the, the first one starts with alm okay does the last one end in ALM or MLA or something? No, the last one ends in you are our protector, so give us victory over the disbelieving people. It's about fighting, victory, and not in self-defense either. And the second last sentence is about we, God and me, we make no distinction between any of his messengers, and, and which then, of course, they do, because Jesus is taken to heaven, the others are not. Now, does the second sentence correspond, or is, or is it linked to the second last one? No, of course not. It's the second sentence in chapter 2 after the LAM is, this is the book about which there is no doubt, a guidance for those conscious of Allah. It's about a book, not messengers, which is the second last one. So as soon as you check the claim, it crumbles. But it gets even better. Within that chapter of 286 verses, Allah uses the word middle once. I have chosen for you the middle ground. In other words, don't go to extremes. Don't go to extremes on this side. Don't go to extremes on the other side. He uses the word once, middle road, middle ground. Where does that verse appear? On the 143rd verse of the 286 right down the middle. <laughs> but this is an academic who studied it for, hold on a second, for many years. And upon that, he's convinced of that structure. First of all, 143 is not the middle of 286. You can't have a middle of 286. It's 285. That's the middle. Is that really your point? That's I mean, one point, yeah, in the middle. Is that, think, well, are you really going to apply that argument to me? Yes. That the 143rd verse is not the middle of 286. And you think that's there, therefore it's not in the middle? And the, the non-Muslim picks it up, okay? Let, let me just explain this because I've, I've had people do this before and they don't explain what we're talking about. If, if I take 286, the number of sentences in chapter 2, and I divide it by 2, I get 143. Okay, fine. Is this the middle? No. <laughs> okay, let me quickly explain how this God could, could have done it better because here you see four sentences and down the middle would be here. You can see nothing is down the middle. If it is in the sentence before the middle, it's here. Is this the middle? No. So my suggestion to God would have been make it one chapter shorter, or, or sorry, one sentence shorter or one sentence longer. Because if you make it a sentence like, like longer, here's the effect. Suddenly you have a sentence which is in the middle. And there you can put the word middle, and then you can have your miracle. But the way that it is, coming up with an even number of sentences, and then just putting middle in the, well, almost in the middle, but not really in the middle, but in the sentence before the middle, is not really that super, is it? I mean, I would expect a bit more from a god. And then what is astonishing is how he refutes himself. You find certain patterns, I accept that but it's the very complexity of those patterns and the numeracy of those patterns that on balance of probability render random events. Hold on a second. Random, let me finish. Random events constructing that complexity on balance of probability, that's what makes it impossible. It's not about finding the odd pattern here or there. It's the, it's the, the, the frequency of those patterns and the accuracy of those patterns that render, render it impossible on the balance of probability. And that's exactly where his claims fail. It's nothing but an occasional match, exactly what he says. Does every chapter have the word middle somewhere near the middle? No. Does every chapter have some sort of pattern? Or is it? No. And has every academic who read the Quran become a Muslim? No. It's just this one guy. So all we have is coincidence, just like Khalifa did with his 19 miracle. It's nothing special. Oh boy. But all he does is blame the non-Muslims for expecting something special. Poor Abbas.
And now, um, after 33 minutes, Hamza joins. Now, he can't shut up for 10 seconds, okay? But thanks to his God, he needs to bugger off and worship his master and Lord after a while. And we can continue. So, 51 minutes. You have a problem. You have a problem. I see what the problem is this. There are two scenarios here. Number one, he's a liar. He made it up. Number two, uh, he's delusional. He has a mental problem. One is that he's de de deliberately defrauded people in believing something. The other one that he's deluded, he's mentally unstable. Of course, the third one, hold on a second. Of course, the third one could be that he is indeed the prophet. So the non-Muslim has a problem because there are two scenarios. Either Muhammad was a liar, deluded, fraud, or the third of two scenarios that he was actually a true prophet. And he's leaving out countless others. And I'm not going to go into that because I've done this so many times. I've explained exactly the scenario, how the Quran fits in with history and so on and so forth. But our Abbasul is not finished making some false claims. I will have the story it's in the Quran. No, mister, the story of Abu Lahab is not in the Quran. All you get is a temper tantrum where a childish person is angry with this guy and his wife. And that's it. You, you need to read elsewhere, not in the Quran, to understand who this is and why someone is angry with this guy. And then after 56 minutes, Kalam comes up and decimates poor Abbas. What is there that can convince a non-Arabic speaking person? Is there anything else that you can deliver to him or anyone else here that is accessible to all of us to brother. actually... Brother! And now we get an interesting discussion because now all of a sudden Abbas is on the back foot. Okay, he has to retreat, retreat, retreat. And, and you can see the fear in his eyes when he sees how Kalam is pushing him against the ropes. And I mean, Kalam is really intelligent, right? And he knows exactly in his very calm, very smooth way he, all he has to do is follow his line of reasoning and the Muslim has no way, nowhere to go. And this is exactly what happens here. I mean, did Abbas learn ancient Greek? No. So why does he lie? Why does he say, yes, he's looked into other things and this is why somebody who wants to learn about um, Islam needs to learn ancient Arabic. He has looked into other uh, well, religions or other God claims and therefore must have learned the language when um, then Kalam asks him, did you? And then he says, no, I didn't. So pff, why? He just diverts and he starts stuttering and then he comes with this brilliant sentence, well, you know, subjects deep subjects have, have academic have arguments. Academic arguments. <laughs> Ouch, he gets trashed so bad, they need to edit and end the video. Okay. That's it on this one. Um, I'm just making it complete so that I cover like most people who you normally see on uh, Speaker's Corner. If you need anything else on this, if you want more details, just hit me up. And otherwise, I'll just see you in the next video. Bye.